Yesterday, Sinaraji said that if in one's life one doesn't know the correct method for controlling oneself, or if one knows a method but does not establish any control over oneself, then madness occurs. And in the texts, there are eight kinds of madness that are described. And yesterday, Sierraji began by speaking about how people go out of control uh, due to their greed for sense pleasures. And uh, this was described at length. And also, under the influence of anger, people go out of control. Beings go out of control. And when one doesn't know, then one also can uh, be out of control due to this ignorance. And this is called moho mataco. People, people are go mad. <clears throat> Sorry, go mad due to their delusion. And not knowing the truth, then various misbeliefs arise, and people go mad due to these. And it's very obvious that this, uh, due to people's wrong beliefs, it's very obvious that, that um, some people go mad with this. For example, people think that if they kill animal animals, that will be beneficial. They'll, they'll uh, make a sacrifice of animals to appease the gods or appease the spirits. And people even think that um, killing people is something that is good to do. They can gain happiness by doing this. According to some beliefs, people think that... Um, so people go, uh, according to one's belief, many people on behalf of their religion uh, take up arms and go to war. But because these beliefs are false, this is just madness that people are, uh, people are going mad due to these beliefs. Some believe that if they kill on, on behalf of their faith, then their God will save them. And so this is... This is mad, madness that arises due to wrong belief. And some go out of control due to alcohol. Uh, due to drinking, one's blood is affected. One's blood is no longer normal. One, the blood can be diseased, and in turn the bile and the liver can be affected, also the phlegm. So one's health can be very badly affected by resorting to drink drugs also. And due to indulgence in sex, uh, with not exercising control over one's greed, also d- disease can arise. So when, uh, when one's blood, bile, and organs uh, become diseased as the result of uh, being mad either due to drinks and drugs or indulgence in one thing or another, then one's health suffers. One's health becomes ruined and one sees that happen to others around one. And the sorrow that one experiences seeing one, one's life go to ruin, seeing the life of others go to ruin, uh, brings upon another form of madness. These, uh, ruin is called Vyathana in Pali. And Vyathano Matako Sokawa Sangato the person who um, goes out of control due to their sorrow is called Yathanomatako, one who is go, uh, mad due to, due to problems, due to ruin that arises, that they experience. So not knowing a method to prevent or to relieve sorrow, many, many people become mad due to sorrow. And this wasn't mentioned last night, so this is an additional six were mentioned, six types of madness were mentioned last night, and this one is the seventh type. 
and then the eighth type is Yako Matako, Yaka Wasangato. A Yaka is a type of maybe like you could say ogre, um, and these beings can enter into one's body and cause people to go mad. So this is an, another type of madness. And all these forms of madness are described in the Buddhist text. In the world, uh, one who does not establish the control of sati using the method of satipatthana is thick with kilesas. And this is the essential meaning of putujana, one who is one who generates many kilesas and is thick with kilesas. So one doesn't, uh, such a one does not have a method for either avoiding uh, transgressive kilesas, quelling the um, obsessive ones who are uprooting the seeds of kilesas. And with no method to uh, deal with the kilesas, then one becomes like a mad person because of this. And thus it's said, that a putujana is a, a worldling is like a madman or a mad woman. So when one doesn't reflect that the life one has, uh, if one doesn't try to make the life one has free of fault and refrain. Um, and doing so, one's behavior will be uh, peaceful and lovable. If one, if one doesn't um, have any ability to reflect on this, that by making one's uh, that by making one's behavior good, one would uh, one would be free of fault. Such a one would give priority to letting one's mind go with regard to the, the ten kinds of misdeeds. The th- uh, three wrong deeds by way of uh, body and four by way of speech, three by way of mind. You know, killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct and various forms of wrong speech and then mental misconduct. So if if one doesn't reflect about uh, making one's life free of fault and give priority to it, then one will let <clears throat> one's, oneself do whatever one wants. Uh, one will undertake whatever one thinks without any control. So without any shame regarding wrongdoing or fear of doing wrong, then one's mind becomes as if it's black. And the, anything that's colored, colored black will just soak up heat. And the mind is similar when it is without shame and fear. The color, things that are colored white, such as clothing, they repel the heat so that we don't feel it so much. <clears throat> and these qualities of shame and fear regarding misdeeds, they not only uh, keep our own life from being destroyed, but they also keep the world from being destroyed. And one who has these qualities of moral shame and moral dread is bright in the world and brightens the world. So these two qualities, hiri, moral moral shame, and otapa, moral dread, are very important in the world. Hiri is the mind state that is disgusted by misdeeds the way one would be disgusted by feces. And otapa is the mind state, mind state that has a, a healthy fear of doing wrong, just the way one has a healthy fear 
regarding picking up a red-hot iron burning ball. So one won't want to touch either of these things, either feces, because of how dirty they are, and one won't want to touch something burning out of uh, quite reasonable fear. So in the world, this Hiri and Otapa are called Soka Dhamma because they make one's life as if it's white, clean and pure. And only if Hiri and Otapa, moral shame and moral dread, are present in someone will the madness that can arise not do so. It will recede. It won't be able to rise up in one. But one also needs to have sympathy for others. When one is driven by selfishness, extreme selfishness, one doesn't have any any loving kindness and thus no sympathetic thought will come up. On the other hand, (coughs) uh, when one has these uh, white tamas of Hiri and Otapa, they repel the heat, heat of kilesas. They repel the heat of raga, dosa, and moha, uh, greed, hatred, and delusion. And if we don't have these qualities of Hiri and Otapa, one will go to performing physical, verbal, and mental misdeeds. Only when one sleeps will there be any relief All of our waking time, uh, without Hiri and Otapa, all of our waking time will just be wide-eyed and pricking up our ears, ready to go for the next pleasure. So if one... If one does not have Hiri Otapa, and one turns to doing misdeeds, there are dangers that arise. Uh, For example, when one looks at oneself after having done wrong, one will blame oneself, and this is called atanuwada bhya, the fear of self-blame. And not only will we uh, look at ourselves and regret what we did, but also others will look at what we did and criticize us. And this is called paranuwada bhya, the danger of blame from others. People who commit the ten ducharitas uh, are blameworthy and they are, uh, because of their behavior, they are, are no longer human, even though they are in human form. And thus such people become ostracized from human society. This is the danger of uh, Paranuvada Bhya, uh, blame and criticism from others. And if, as we're doing misdeeds, we've broken the law, then there's also Danda Bhya, the danger of punishment according to the law. And depending on what one has done, one may spend many years in imprisonment one may uh, be one may also uh, suffer death or, or torture so this is the another the third danger that can arise due to not having hiri otapa and doing misdeeds and the fourth is that because of our bad intention our bad chetana this bad chetana is like a seed and when this a seed is bad then the plant that comes from it will also be bad. And thus we have the fear of bad results due to our bad intention. And this is called dukati bhya. We have the danger of being born in a future realm, in a realm in bad circumstances. But the basic thing is we get bad results due to our bad intention. And in doing misdeeds, we let the internal enemies multiply inside us. All human beings have a responsibility to avoid the ten the misdeeds. 
And if we do so, at the base of this uh, is the white Dhamma of Hiri and Otapa. And with these as our at, at, as a base, we don't suffer from heat, or if we do, we don't suffer very much. Hiri and Otapa are the factors which uh, help us to control ourselves and not to harm others. So they also bring about basic human sympathy, the ability to consider how would I feel if that were done to me, and not wanting to suffer that way, one also feels sympathy for others. One doesn't want them to suffer either. Having this hiri otapa and basic human sympathy, one controls oneself with mindfulness with regard to one's physical uh, with acts, with regard to one's speech, and with regard to one's mind. And doing so, one won't be in the wrong. And because of one's self-control, one also won't harm others. In the world, the world would be very peaceful if this quality were present in more people. And uh, if we were if we're to think about what would it be like if just half the world were to keep the five precepts, it would be very peaceful. Without Hiri, <coughs> Hiri and Otapa, the qualities of lack of moral shame and lack of moral dread over, overwhelm one, and one has no control. And on one side. Uh, if one has no sympathy, then there will be no limit to what one does. Lacking Hiri and Otapa, one will give full reign to whatever physical, verbal, or mental uh, deed one wants to do. One will give full reign to one's mind. And thus, Pamada, or various kinds of madness, will arise. The prefix pa means various, and mada means madness. So, if this happens, then people will neglect their responsibilities as uh, human beings, and they will do many, many misdeeds. When one lacks sympathy and also lacks hiri and otapa, or moral shame and moral dread, One will have no morality whatsoever. One will be a human in form only. One will have no humanity left. In the uh, in the world, about three quarters of the population uh, is basically violent and out of control, without any moral control. One can draw a conclusion that this situation is due to the heat that people suffer due to lack of moral shame and lack of moral dread, a hirika and an otapa. Hiri and otapa protect us from the heat, and their opposite, a hirika and an otapa, soak up the heat. Thus, when the heat of raga or greed becomes extreme, people go mad. When the heat of anger becomes extreme, people go mad due to that. And when the, when the heat of ignorance also becomes extreme, this leads to a madness also. This is the conclusion that one can draw from looking at the situation in the world. People who indulge in misdeeds are happy when they have the things that they like, the the sense object that they like. It's not really satisfying, but they have a kind of happiness. But they think that it is real. And thus they go after these types of pleasures on and on uh, until until it kills them. 
And what they're like is like moths who circle around a flame going closer and closer and finally they just fly in and burn up. This is what people are like regarding sense pleasures. At this time, one should have a lot of hiri and otapa. Hiri and otapa, otapa is like one's own personal method of protection. In avoiding misdeeds, transgressive uh, acts, in preventing in preventing the medium-grade kilesas and uprooting the seeds of kilesas, hiri and otapa are very important. Because if hiri and otapa, moral shame and moral dread, are present, then sati is also present. And when sati is present, all the forms of madness cannot arise. If sati sticks to the object, then apamada, diligence, heedfulness, is occurring. And to the extent that one's shuri and otapa are strong, apamada will also be strong. So with this, um, with these qualities, one is able to control oneself. And when, uh, in doing so, one's own world is not destroyed. And because of this, Hiri and Otapa are called Lokapala Dhamma, the, guardian, the guardians of the world, the guardian Dhammas of the world. By controlling oneself, one's own world, one's own little world becomes safe. And making one's own little world safe is more important than saving the world, the the larger world. And why that is, is because some people let their own world be destroyed. Doing so, they don't have Huri and Otapa. And without that... The world at large is affected. The world at large is destroyed by individuals not having Hiri and Otapa. So due to the acts that one undertakes, not having Hiri and Otapa, one's own world is destroyed and the, uh, yeah, the world at large is also harmed. If one always has Hiri and Otapa, one's own world will be protected. And because of the Hiri and Otapa, one doesn't commit any misdeeds. And doing so, one won't commit any acts of violence. One won't uh, transgress against anyone else. And thus, the world at large is also protected. It's not destroyed. And... The reason, when, when we say that Hiri and Otapa are the guardian dhammas of the world, what we mean by world is one's own world. This is what we have to save and protect. When one is endowed with Hiri and Otapa, then one's physical, verbal, and mental behavior are clean. And such a person doesn't waste one's time due to the uh, disturbance of raga, greed, or due to disturbance from dosa, anger, or from delusion, moha. And not wasting one's time being disturbed by these, one one lives peacefully. And such a one is bright with regard to one's personal qualities, which are at minimum that this person is keeping sila, morality, their physical and verbal behavior. The uh, misdeeds are being quelled. They're dying out. So one is free of fault. And such a person is seen as being blameless and also... uh, 
one's physical and verbal behavior become peaceful because of no misdeeds. One is not giving anybody else any trouble, and correspondingly, others won't give trouble to one. This, uh, this is called protecting others. We protect others with our morality. And thus, these Hiri and Otapa are called Deva Dhammas, because they make things bright. So one, when one is endowed with Hiri and Otapa, these Dhammas which protect the world, one's own world is preserved, and also one is contributing to peace in the world at large. And this, these, the qualities of Hiri and Otapa themselves are bright, and a person who has these qualities is also bright, like a light. So Hiri and Otapa are called the Soka Dhammas, or white Dhammas. They're called the guardians of the world, Lokapala Dhammas. And they're also called the Deva Dhammas, being very bright. And one who has these qualities, to the extent that one controls oneself, one will have apamata, diligence. And thus, madness will not arise in one's mind stream, and one's life will be peaceful. One who possesses Kiri and Otapa and uses the tool of apamara to avoid what should be avoided without fail and to do without fail the things that should be done. Such a one doesn't let one's mind run freely to sense objects, to desirable sense objects, and especially such a one does not let one's mind go to sense objects that one has no right to enjoy. Regarding one's own legally obtained sensual objects, one enjoys them only sparingly. So this is the way one behaves with apamara. So without the control of virya, sati, and samadhi, if one doesn't have, uh, if, one, if one doesn't have these, one's mind will go to sense objects because we live in a world of the senses. So without these qualities, virya, sati, samadhi, and also no hiri and otapa, um, our mental strength will not be there. So we won't be able to resist the good and the bad objects that come our way. Our mind will be reactive. So with, uh, when we encounter something likable, something desirable, then there will be greed. We'll want to go for it. And when we encounter something we dislike, there will be anger or rejection. So our mind will be reacting, either going with the object or rejecting it. And if one has shame regarding the kilesas, the mental defilements that arise in one's mind, then one notes them whenever they arise. So when, um, and because of one's diligent noting, when one encounters sense pleasures, because of one's ability to note, gradually the greed that we feel decreases and also anger also gradually is reduced. Uh, without any control, this won't happen. So as much as one can, one has to keep one's mind on the arising object. And without this control, the sense objects the kama gunas, they bind us so tightly that we cannot pull ourselves away from them. So this topic is going to be continued tomorrow. That's all for tonight. So be continued tomorrow. That's all for tonight. So be continued tomorrow.